So after the preparation, the proving right now is really easy. We just once again assume that the square root of 3 equals to p over q like we said before. And now we just do some algebra and multiply it times q which is not 0 by the definition because we allowed it uh, no 0 at natural numbers. So we have square root of 3 times q equals to p and then we have a scale with the same weight on both sides so we square it and we still have the same balance so we have 3 times q squared equals to p squared and now we say okay p squared is 3 times something that means that p squared is a multiple of 3 but as we can see on the page 4 we said we proved if a squared is a multiple of 3 a itself must be also a multiple of 3 which means that p squared is a multiple of 3 or let's say 3 times k for some integer k. But if p is 3k then p squared is 9k squared. Okay, so we just substitute 9k squared instead of p squared. So we have 3 times q squared equals to 9 times k squared which means if we divide by 3 that q squared equals to 3 times k squared which means once again that q squared is 3 times something so q itself is a multiple of 3 it's obvious so q is let's say 3 q squared is 3 times some t and that means once again the same argument that q itself must be a multiple of 3 let's say 3 times some F. Okay. And what do we have right now? We have a square root of 3 equals to p over q, which is, by our proof, um, we have, let's say, 3 times k over 3 times f, which is a contradiction to our assumption that p and q have GCD equals to 1. Yes, because we can divide it by 3 right now, so this is exactly a contradiction to this condition.